first-person shooters aren't really my thing. I don't have anything against them, but I'm also not enough of an FPS connoisseur to see the differences. So unless said shooter has a solid story to tie it together, I have little interest. So the draw for me to Wolfenstein The New Order was the alternate history hook. It's a standard what if the Nazis won World War II scenario, so I was kinda sorta on the fence about it. But after hearing glowing praise from a variety of outlets about this one, I figured I'd take a look. You are BJ Blasco... Blacko... Forget it. BJ blow him up. A US Army Ranger sent in on a super secret mission during World War II to blow up a Nazi advanced tech research and development facility. The mission goes pear-shaped and BJ is critically injured. As a result, he's incapacitated for the next 14 years being nursed back to health. In the ensuing years, BJ Blackenout learns through glimpses of consciousness that the Nazis seem to have won the war. The hospital he stays at is routinely invaded by Nazi stormtroopers to take people for experiments. One day, the troops start killing people indiscriminately, causing BJ to finally get his strength back to knife the dude coming to kill him. Soon after, BJ Blastovich joins up with the resistance. He goes out on missions of sabotage, infiltration, and theft of equipment. The ultimate goal being the destruction of the facility that BJ failed to destroy 14 years ago. Let's get the mechanics out of the way real quick. They are superb. The guns feel great, the graphics and sound assets are great, and feel great, 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 great. Mechanically, this game is very sound. It does have a few challenge spikes here and there, and the checkpoint system can be a tad unforgiving in saving your state with little ammo at times. But aside from a few frustrations, the game balance is very good. The gunplay itself is quite silly at times though. I mean, I'll admit, dual welding shotguns is awesome. Running in and blasting a room of Nazis is ridiculously fun despite the absurdity. Wolfenstein is chock full of one-man army fantasies like this. So mechanics, done. I typically talk about immersion values here, but I'm going to circle back to this because we need to dig into the story a bit beyond the setup. So the majority of the game is spent in alternate 1960s where the Nazis have pretty much conquered the world. There is no real resistance to the Nazi regime in terms of nation states. This causes a bit of a moral dilemma for the actions you take in the game. See, the premise of invoking the Nazis in games is that you get a historic villain immediately recognizable and have no problem blowing them away with whatever means available. This is because the Nazis in those games were the aggressor. Historically, the player is a member of the armed forces trying to defeat the Nazis in the context of a larger war. This serves as a moral framework for taking the lives of Nazi soldiers and special agents. This moral framework doesn't exist in Wolfenstein. The Nazis are essentially the legitimate authority, like it or not. And it's this context that throws the whole monkey wrench into the kill Nazis narrative. Catholic Just War theory requires the following to be true before a war is considered just. The damage inflicted by the aggressor on the nation or community of nations must be lasting, grave, and certain. All other means of putting an end to it must have been shown to be impractical or ineffective. There must be serious prospects of success. The use of arms must not produce evils and disorders graver than the evil to be eliminated. BJ Basham Hart and crew are not legitimate authorities. They are just people fighting against the Nazis. It's pretty obvious the prospects for success are slim to none, and more importantly, it is very hard to justify the actions of the Resistance as not causing greater evils than the ones they are trying to stop. This is particularly true as the game goes on. The first missions involve checkpoints and arm posts, but later you are invading a museum that doubles as an R&D military firm. The most egregious one though has to be an assault on a bridge that presumably holds both civilian and military traffic. The damage done pretty much guarantees that there were civilian casualties. The end of the game has you go to the research facility where all the cool tech was generated, but by this point, that feels pointless. This leads us to the uncomfortable conclusion that BJ Smash Em Up and crew are potentially terrorists, not resistance fighters. Their backstories about oppression under the Nazi regime are easily believable, but they don't really have an end goal beyond killing Nazis. They seem like shadows of people, hollowed out by hate and fighting a war they can't win but persisting in perpetuating death. At least for BJ Knock em Out, yes I'm seeing how far I can take this. It makes sense, because for him the war was in full swing seemingly yesterday. Speaking of subject matter, this game is quite dark. From torture to horror choices, this game deals with dark subject matter. Its bleakness is punctuated with bits of humor here and there, but overall the atmosphere is quite depressing. Which is only fitting for the story, but it is a bit on the oppressive side. And it's this bleak storyline that to me really conflicts with the almost silly gunplay. The meat of the game makes you into this one-man army who is nigh immune to bullets, but the bleak history tries to convey the sense of suffering, loss, and almost despair. This clash causes these two sides of the game to detract from one another rather than enhance each other. This is especially problematic given how some very sensitive concepts are used in the game. For example, one of the levels involves busting a scientist out of a Nazi labor slash concentration camp. It depicts the callousness of how the prisoners are treated, but otherwise it adds very little to the disjointed design. It feels like how a lot of the subject matter is used, to try to root the game in serious matter, but is really just brooding angst. This runs the risk of trivializing such topics in order to attempt to give the story authenticity. Finally, the game gets downright facepalmy when it tries to start philosophizing. Tekla, the tech wonk who plays the unhinged genius that all resistance groups are required to have by law, spouts nonsense about determinism and the mind being little more than matter in a way that contradicts herself in the middle of the monologue. Another flashback scene involves BJ Dukem and the aforementioned prisoner talking about how the world stinks and that the crime the Nazis commit is having conviction. In other words, having conviction leads to atrocities rather than buying into an ideology that subsumes humans into pawns of the state. That's your daily slap at religion in case you didn't know. 
This isn't to say I think the devs have malicious intent, but I do think something went awry while putting this thing together. It's almost as if they developed the game and the story in separate departments, and they really need to read up on some philosophy and basic arguments before engaging in deeper thoughts than double shotgun or double machine gun. Despite all these problems, Wolfenstein The New Order is a lot of fun. If you are into shooters, then this game is for you. But for all the cinematics and interesting universe, the story and gameplay don't gel thematically, and the game itself uses the historic Nazi bad guy narrative while undercutting the background that makes that narrative work, thus leaving our hero on morally dubious grounds. Which is really too bad because the themes used in this game could have made an epic story. That's all for now. Just a quick note, I'll be taking a week off from the reviews to catch up on life stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video to the end. If you like more of this, you can click on the subscribe link at the bottom, and as you can see, there are a couple of other videos that you can click on as well. One of them is one of my prior reviews or another content video, and the other one is going to be a playthrough that I'm doing. So feel free to click on either one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks very much.